everybody and welcome back to FIFA 18. It's nice we got some training available here so let's just train I guess. Uh, let's put in Martinez with a first time strike. Let's put in, let's try Ad Wilson on there. Let's put in uh, Bailey. Where we are now, 
with VAR. Um, but yeah. Uh, but anyway, Portugal were, I think, pretty lucky to go through. Um, Iran had some chances, definitely, to knock them out. Um, and they kind of fluffed their lines a little bit. So much as Spain like won the group. So now. Um, so yeah, they're, they're kind of, I guess, given a, a more difficult, oh man, that was a good tackle, uh, a more difficult route, but, you know, people who always, like, I don't like this idea of wanting to come second or whatever, because you, uh, in the group stage that is, because you think it's going to give you an easier ride later on in the tournament, I don't believe that's true, um, hold on, let me grab a drink, because otherwise I'm going to have to cough. I've got a bit of a cold at the minute. It's really annoying when you have to record. Yeah, because I think what's you're, you're going to face difficult teams. It's like the Champions League when people are like, oh, I hope we get so-and-so in the draw. You know what? If you've got any hope of winning the competition, you're going to have to beat a good team at some point. So you might as well just do it now. And the other thing is, like, the mentality of winning and the kind of momentum it gives you and the habit that it brings in, like, is not worth giving up on, um, just to get a slightly easier route in the last 16 slash quarterfinals, you know, so, I mean, effectively, the World Cup is a competition about winning the World Cup, and truthfully, it doesn't matter where you finish if you don't win the World Cup, like, honestly, like, I remember who won every World Cup, I don't remember who the finalists were, I don't remember who came third, I think the third place, fourth place playoff is done. <laughs> like, I know it's like a mentality of, of this cheek, of this cheek, he's a cheeky boy, he's a cheeky boy. Uh, I think the mental, you know, it's important to have mentality of enjoying the World Cup and seeing what it is, which is a, you know, a festival of football. And, but at its heart, it's a competition, and the reality of competition in football is you can turn around by all means and say, you know, oh, England did well, they reached the quarterfinals, the semi-finals, but the reality is that, you know, what it's about is winning the competition, okay? It, it, it always is. There's no advantage whatsoever to coming second, third, fourth, fifth, anything really, other than, I guess, maybe you could argue seeding, but, like, it's, it's a bit irrelevant, really. I think it's like, needs a, oh what a ball, Abraham's through, wow, wow, we, uh, pulls that one right up, I think we're going to beat Brighton, you know, get out of it, how is that a foul? understand that a lot of players have had long seasons and stuff like that but 
I genuinely don't think that resting them for one game will make too much of a difference unless they are nursing an injury. Um, like players do run a long way in football matches and you have to be very physically fit to play football nowadays. But um, also players are capable of running <laughs> you know, a long way multiple times over. Um, and sure, if you have players susceptible to injury, it's just come back from injury maybe or is perhaps nursing a knock. Like, of course you should rest them, I think, if you're already qualified, because there's talk of England and Belgium resting players, but otherwise, like, you know, from an international football point of view, you don't get a lot of time to work together as a team. You know, before the World Cup, you have a couple of friendlies, and then you're in the World Cup, that's it. You know, and you've got to be at your peak. So, like, kind of disrupting that group of players, you know, if you have a, a solid first eleven planned out, doesn't make any sense to me like just play them you know if they're fit and they want to play play the players you know also from a morale point of view you know if you go out there and lose and you put out a weakened team you know, it's not good for morale um you know for, especially for the players who aren't playing because they could be thinking oh i wish i'd have been out there and then you have things like, you know, you look at a striker and people talking about resting Harry Kane. Well, um, yeah, if you, what happens if you rest Harry Kane and say you've got Jamie Vardy and we get like a penalty or something and Vardy takes some scores, Harry Kane's going to be thinking, well, I could have got that goal. And momentum for a striker is very important for goal scoring, whether it's, you know, in off the back of your heel or whatever. It's that, that mentality of scoring and that feeling of scoring is very, very important for players and you know, wanting to be in the lead for the golden boot is important. You know, we've seen Ronaldo's now on five, isn't he, I think? Is he? I might be... No, I'm wrong. That was Charisma who scored. <laughs> uh, Ronaldo's still on four, sorry. Uh, but Lukaku could play in that Belgian game. Or he might not. You know, he might have been rested. And it could be Harry Kane's chance to, to get one, you know, and put him onto six. It's offside, and that's a terrible ball. Let's sub off Ed Milson for uh, Che Adams. Let's bring on Sherla for Bailey. And bring on Walcott for Odegaard. So yeah, that's my thoughts anyway. I don't think England should rest players unless they have a player who is injured or has the potential of being injured. Let's just keep the momentum going. And... You know, the Belgian game's a real test for us, and the confidence it would give us if we won that game, even if it's a weakened Belgium side, um, I think that would be a real confidence boost for the side. So, yeah, I think it's an important game, and we should play our best team. But, hey, I guess there's the other thought of, like, oh, what happens if one of you, you know, if we play Harry Kane in it and he gets injured, but... Like, that's like saying, what happens if I walk out my front door and I get hit by a bus? Well, you know, that's life. <laughs> it's, you know, it's not a computer simulation. We did also see in the Argentina game, near that Messi score, a brilliant goal. Um, which kind of, one of those goals which gets better every time you see it. So it's uh, you know it's a five-time Ballon d'Or winner. It's 
it's ridiculous um, to say that he's not one of the greats because he hasn't won a World Cup. It's as if like the World Cup is the pinnacle of football anyway. It really isn't the pinnacle of football. Like, the World Cup is often very entertaining because sometimes the teams are not that good. <laughs> Like often you get a team which which does play together, but they're never as good as a club side. I, I refuse to believe that. Like, you know, if you played like Barcelona or Manchester City or or you know Liverpool against any one of these teams, the World Cup they would beat them hands down because they train week in week out with them. Um, you know, they have a, a a more complex system. They have more like facilities. Um, the training, you know, they play you know, with a home crowd and stuff like that, and I just think it's yeah, you know like, the World Cup is not for me the pinnacle of football, it's, it's a magnificent tournament, and it's the one which like, because it's countries rather than teams, you know, it's um you know, it, it's different, and it's great but it used to be, I think that that's a great ball. That's an easy tap in. Um, it's a great competition. It used to be the pinnacle in the same way the FA Cup used to be the pinnacle. But then as you know, the leagues have progressed, as we've had the Champions League, you know, progress and grow into an elite competition. Like, I'm sorry, but I'm not talking about what I would rather win. I think most people would probably rather win the World Cup. I'm just saying from a football, pure football perspective, um, I think you will see better football played in those competitions like, say, the Premier League or um, the Champions League. Great interplay here. To ultimately screw it up. <laughs> stuff he's well offside also his touch is awful you know because I still believe like for a football player or a football team winning the league is I think always the pinnacle of what you can do to be the most consistent team in out of you know 38 games or whatever it is in your league is like that is the pinnacle of a team Cup competitions as well, like obviously very good, but for me, league systems are always going to be there. You play every single team twice, home and away, and for me, that that is what shows you over the course of a season who the best team is, more so than a cup competition. Um, because you know, in a league, you could have some referee decisions go against you, or you could have like the odd bad game but it's about that consistent level and um, we kind of believe that that is we're not on track of course, of course we're not we're first in the league we're into the next round of the Champions League after beating Real Madrid but we're definitely not on track yeah well done FIFA 18 well done Uruguay manager no thanks AFC born mouth Turkish manager, no thanks. God, everyone wants me as manager, don't they? Okay, right. Here is Martinez. How is he still not fully fit? This guy's a joke. <laughs> okay, well, I'm not playing him then. That's right, I'm not playing him. Odegaard. Pit and Walcott saw that he did alright last game. We got Man United soon anyway. Thanking calls to stop whinging, Jesus Christ. Let's go. Go football. Let's go football.
Yeah, he's got the pace here. Oh, did he spoon that right over? He spooned that right over. At the pace, but he didn't have to finish, did he? Sometimes you see um, players go through with like medicals, which probably uh, are not done that you know properly, but they they kind of take a bit of a gamble on them. Um, oh boy, that was a bad pass. That uh, was an even worse shot. Uh, Fernando Torres to Chelsea. Uh, I think he'd had some injuries at Liverpool. Was never the same player, was he? Um, I think he had the injuries at Liverpool, not at Chelsea, if memory serves me correctly. Um, Chelsea have a bit of a history of buying some duff strikers. Uh, Shevchenko. <laughs> what a great player he was. Except for Chelsea. Um, it won that. Excuse me, I've just had a sneeze come on. <laughs> right, I've stifled it. I've just got my eyes watering now. As I said, I've got a bit of a cold. What a free kick though, didn't I? I think it's about time. Oh, fuck it, the penalty. How the hell did that happen? Did Bailey's the best pen taker? I think it's. Uh, nah, it's Bailey. Come on, Bailey. This is a lot of penalties at the World Cup. That's a good pen. Oh, come on. There we go. Mostly from Harry Kane. Harry Kane is a good penalty taker. Uh, Ronaldo missed a penalty, which was hilarious. Uh, I like Ronaldo. I'm not like a Ronaldo hater or anything, but it is funny when he does make a mistake. It's just like a totally human thing. Because it's funny because everybody was obviously slagging off Messi because he missed a penalty, and Ronaldo scored a penalty in the Spain match. Um, and then Ronaldo was misses a penalty against Iran. Well, it was saved, I should say, by the Iranian goalkeeper who um, apparently was. Uh, homeless um, when he was growing up, like he ran away from home to become a footballer, and he was home. 
fitness and then like got his chance in a football team or something like that. It was kind of a crazy story. Um, and there he is, saving a penalty from Cristiano Ronaldo. Not bad. Good save. <laughs> Sorry, just not my mic there. But yeah, it was it was quite funny to see that. And it was funny to almost see him get sent off. I personally um uh, I'm very on the wall about that decision. That that's when something like VAR, I think, is not that useful. It's 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 more for a referee to decide on whether or not there was intent there. Because what basically happened was he was kind of running with the Iranian player, and his arm went out and kind of flailed, and it did hit the Iranian player in the defence, but in the face. But I guess the the question is, is it a red card, which you know is kind of saying he intended to hit the player, or is it a yellow card, which is kind of more he accidentally hit the player. Ah, I should have passed the ball. And they chose to go for a yellow, which I don't think is... Like, it's, it's a very difficult decision to make. I don't think it's necessarily the wrong decision. Some people do think that. But again, it's an incredibly difficult one to actually kind of, even with multiple, you know, plays, it, it's a real difficult one to do. Yeah, people say, oh, he bowled it because it's Ronaldo. Um, and the ref wasn't very good, like I will say that much. But, I don't know, I feel like that probably wasn't a red card. But hey, maybe, the problem is maybe the next match a referee will decide that is a red card and then the player gets sent off. And that's more the problem with VAR that people actually realise is VAR is there to make a, or is there to assist the referee, but it doesn't make decisions for him. All he can do is see it, and people still interpret interpret things differently. You know, it's not like goal line technology where it's either a goal or it's not a goal. It's it's really very simple. Over the whole of the ball crosses the line, and it uses the you know stuff to decide that, or it doesn't cross the line uses the microchips in the ball to, to decide whether or not that is the case or it doesn't cross the line um, in which case it's not a goal it's very simple like that's a, a you know a no grey area it's either a yes or a no but VAR is still has grey areas because there are still um, you know kind of not loopholes but there's still like a lot of football rules are there for the referee to Jesus Christ Bournemouth um, are there at the interpretation of the ref of the referee, you know? And people can say, well, that doesn't need consistency, but it's so difficult to get consistency when you're talking about intention and stuff like that, you know, like handballs and things like that. Very, very difficult. <laughs> you know, Carl Walker's penalty for England, like, um, you know, and some referee will say, yeah, you know, that's a penalty because he's kind of impeded the player and he's hit him, so it's a penalty. A lot of referees would probably say, nope, that isn't a penalty uh, at all. You know, the guys run into it. It's such a difficult one to actually say. If you can think that you are 100% certain, but, you know, if you listen to the arguments of somebody else, um, or, you know, the points they put forward, maybe you're not so certain. And that's where it kind of comes in. You know, these ones where it's very difficult to be 100% certain. Whose side do you err on? Do you err on the side of the team getting the penalty or potentially the, the red card or whatever, or on the opposition side. It, it's a super difficult one to do, you know, it's why uh, VAR will never be, like, without contention. But there you go. It's my two cents as we battle Bournemouth here. We should beat them, I think. It's a bad miss, Tammy. You did the hard part. You got through the defender. For 
knocking about a bit here, aren't they? It's a nice bit of passing movement they've got. Okay. It's a terrible ball. I don't know what I was thinking there. <sighs> so it's that though. Is a shocker. Uh, sure, let's bring on Sherla. Why not? Oh, I think I'm getting cramped in my leg. <laughs> oh, I tell you what, there's nothing worse than like waking up at night with cramp. Is that? Oh my god. I sometimes get that, especially in the summer, because it could be due to like uh, lactic acid buildup and stuff like that. And if you don't drink enough water or stuff like that, you can get cramp, obviously. Um, and oh my. Like, I have never honestly been shot or stabbed, but I imagine cramp is worse. <laughs> and it's that one as well, where it's like your muscles are like, just like, so, oh, it's awful, awful, I hate it. I mean, don't get me wrong, I'd rather have cramp than get shot or stabbed. As I'm aware, cramp is not life-threatening. Um, I guess it depends where you get cramp, though, doesn't it, really? If you're driving your car and you suddenly your whole leg like cramped up, that could be really bad. Um, but yeah, probably not quite as bad as getting shot or stabbed. Pretty sure about that. Despite having never had that happen to me, thankfully. What a ball! What a ball! on him. Not quite. I think it needs to be subbed off to be fair. Uh, I wanted to give Martinez a game actually. so slow. He is so slow. Compared to the rest of the team, to be fair, I don't think he's actually that slow. I'm thinking this is going to be 2-0. Martinez <laughs> touched the ball, to be fair. <laughs> Oh, there we go, 2 0. Solid, solid win. I think really deserved much more than that. Who we got next? Manchester United. And then. To Man United. Okay, we've got week to West Ham and then Barcelona. So that'll be a good warm up. Uh, next game against West Ham before the Barcelona game. Uh. No problem, Van Ginkle. No problem. Uh, please.
somebody signed this guy. It's ridiculous that he's still on my uh, in my team. Uh, okay, Manchester United at home. Let's play. Abraham over there. Get Martinez up. We'll cut for Odegaard. Putting on Schurler for Bailey there, I think. We'll leave these guys in. You'd walk back, actually. Must have been, I forgot about him. Um, instructions. Uh, getting behind. Give you balance him. I'll stay central and target man. Shall uh, I just cut that outside with that Odegaard? I'll have to cut inside because he's a bit slow. And we're going to counter attack. Uh, yes. And actually. Let's not play that game. <laughs> okay. Where's oh, it? Sellers Park, isn't it? Yeah. Kind of want to see the teams if they've got them. <laughs> Interested to know who Manchester United are actually playing. Oh, they've still got Phil Jones, apparently. And he's their captain. Still got. Magnificent Crystal Palace team. Why the hell are you guys not doing it? Football kids. There's Jose Mourinho, still Manchester United manager, three years on. Uh, they are third, so it's actually quite a big game. We are what seven points clear of West Ham. Well, that West Ham game will be a good game. Got them next. Uh, show us the teams. Jose Mourinho does look pretty old there. He's also very good, you know, human being, you know, he's got that kind of fund set where he's trying to get, like, footballers to, to donate, like, their part of their wages to charity, stuff like this. That's good, that's good. Oh, that's a good save. Shell. Good 
player apparently is on the way from the node. Wouldn't surprise me. Doesn't get used hardly enough. Uh, you know, if you're going to play as a like left winger and then they buy in Sanchez, it's like you're not really going to get used very much. I, I don't know why that's a yellow card. Um, so yeah, I think there's talk of him potentially going to Juventus, which I could think would be a good move for him. But I don't know because Juventus have already and they already they brought Emery Chan. I don't know if that's actually been officially announced yet, but I think it's on a free though, so the chances are that they could have some money spare, I guess, but I was talking to a friend of mine who's a Man United fan, and I was like, oh, how much do you think you're going to get for Andy Marshall? And he was like, oh, we should get like 50 million. And I was like, are you fucking joking me? Like, <laughs> the actual audacity to ask 50 million for Andy Marshall would be hilarious. Uh... I was like, look, if you recoup what you paid for him, I think that would like, be fair. Because they overpaid for him, let's face it, because they're Man United and they just overpay for everyone. More so than Man City even. Ugh, that's a good tackle. So hoping I could just squeeze some space open to that. I was kind of thinking actually about teams which are big teams in like England which don't have many players going to the World Cup like the think about it like with um, Liverpool like their lineup you know Firmino, Mane, Salah they've all gone to the World Cup so they're having less rest than other players if you think about Man City like pretty much every Man City player has gone to the World Cup you know De Bruyne, Sterling, Aguero, uh, Jesus, uh, Fernandinho it's like pretty much everyone um, gone to the World Cup. But I think Man United are the ones where they have a few players not gone going to the World Cup. Obviously, Lukaku's gone uh, and Pogba. But then you think about um, well, Martial, I guess, Mata, uh, Alexis Sanchez. Uh, they're not gone. And I wonder if that will kind of work out quite well for them. I guess from Chelsea's point of view, you don't really know because you don't know who the hell's going to be there next season. Even the manager, you don't know. You don't know. Um, that was a dumb throw, but I think we got away with it. Oh, what a ball. Oh, what a save. Save. Oh, that's a good head. It's not a bad head. It's unlucky it's straight at the keeper, but not bad. I feel like Man United are very defensive against us. Maybe that's just Jose Mourinho a thing. Why the hell did you do that ball? It's a bad pass. So nice that we didn't manage to get a bit more on it. Um, that's going to be the keepers all day long. Okay. Trying to pass it about a little bit. Work some space. Seems to be a lot of space there. Poor ball.
Milson for um, Abraham. A bit more legs in midfield, though. they'll have like a um, an option in the next FIFA to just rugby tackle people when there's a corner because there seems to be a lot of that going on in the World Cup doesn't there which is really good ball <laughs> That's a good ball or not? I'll tell you in a minute. It's a bad ball. <laughs> uh, it nearly was a good ball. up a little bit now Man United this is our opportunity to get a, a good counter on oh. ah crap pass crap uh, there's, I'm waiting for that run from Loftus Cheek considering I told him to you know get into the box and push forward and it just didn't arrive Busted him. Sloppy passes there. Okay. Oh, that's a good cross. If I'd probably had Abraham on the end of that, not Martinez, we might have seen a goal there. This could be a nil deal here. Yeah. I don't think that's a terrible result. Scheme of things, but perhaps puts a little bit more pressure on that West Ham game coming up next. That's that's a that's a couple of big games next time. Next episode. West Ham and first leg of Barcelona. I don't know where why it would not let me do you see that didn't let me select the defender who 
was in front of him. Know what the reason for that was? Oh man, it was like worse rubber banding there than bloody Mario Kart, you know, for the player being able to spring back. Oh, it was a penalty. Fuck. I knew as soon as I was going in there. Like, he had to make that tackle. Ah, oh, we could end up losing this match, and I don't think we've deserved to do that. I just... It's just a mistake, isn't it? A little bit of impatience coming through there. I don't think I've ever saved a penalty. I'm just going to stay in the middle. Ah. It's frustrating, for sure. Just, that, that was pure like frustration trying to get the ball back and like just if you make a tackle in the area you've got to be damn sure um, just like the final ball's been terrible but they've been so defensive I guess it's worked I guess that's Mourinho oh this is such a bad pass <sighs> like the simple ball was on there. He didn't have to do anything. He did. Oh, there comes the Kakos. I wonder if they were resting him. It'd be weird if they were, but... Oh. I wanted to pass to uh, Ruben off the street. He's come running up the middle there. And instead it puts through some bloody... Wonderful. <laughs> you know, by wonderful, what I mean is it's a wonder it even bloody got near the guy. Oh, come on. Yeah. Ah, really disappointed. That, that puts a lot more pressure on that West Ham game. Really disappointed to lose that game. Ah, I don't think we probably did enough to win it. There's that big chance of Odegaard, which should have gone in, but yeah. Um, looks like West Ham didn't win, actually, which is a little bit better, but it does move Manchester United a little bit further. But anyway, we're going to finish up there for now, guys. Thanks for watching. As always, it's been my pleasure, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.